arranged marriage, where a bride and groom are primarily selected by family, was once a widespread practice worldwide. It has, however, lost popularity in many regions, especially in the West, where it's considered a legal offense to force someone into marriage. While arranged marriage may be viewed as outdated and ineffective when starting a family in some cultures, it is not the case in India. Arranged marriage still holds strong to ancient beliefs that have been passed down for thousands of years. Marriage in India follows a highly conditional and procedural approach, deeply rooted in traditions, laws and the caste system. Historically, parents or families held the decisive power in finding a suitable partner for their child, resulting in what is commonly known as an absolutely arranged marriage. While some marriages today are self-chosen, arranged marriages continue to be the prevailing form for nearly all unions in India. Chujoy Chakrabarti, a young man with a sad expression, is one who opposes arranged marriage. As he intended, he pursued a path of his own. His girlfriend, with whom he's been for over seven years, is a woman he chose for himself, not someone provided by his parents or family. For seven long and smooth years, everything seemed fine. Until six months ago, when Chujoy noticed a change in her behavior. Suspicious actions led him to suspect that she might be involved with another man. Investigation. Busy, busy, busy. Tarpor jokhon ami oke chesta kuchhi call korbar. Tokhon bolche je ami best hoychi lam boss phone kore chilo. Tarpor ami ur boss ke hoychi ni boss amar bundu. It was a man wearing a long-sleeved white shirt over a brown waistcoat, donning dark-framed glasses and sporting a thin moustache above thick lips, who appeared to be the one who could provide some solace for his frustrations. Troy, a private investigator, was hired by Chu Joy to look into his girlfriend's behavior and uncover the cause of her recent changes. In a small detective agency, there was a young woman working as his assistant. Her role was to search for information and gather relevant data. Private investigation was more of a sideline for Troy, or as he jokingly referred to it, a hobby. His main occupation was that of a hotel owner. Having previously worked as a police officer, Troy relied on his connections within the police force to find a way to access Chu Joy's girlfriend's phone data. During the process of examining the phone's usage, Detective Troy came across several noteworthy details, including specific phone numbers and timestamps. These are the call detail records. We have collected two call detail records for two mobile numbers. Subject using, subject means uh, she using one number uh, for WhatsApp and one number for calling. Okay. The WhatsApp number is nothing, there is no call at all. You can see, you can see it, there no call at all, only bank, uh, bank uh, SMS or nothing, nothing is there. But the calling number, the calling number and as per the call detail record, we have found that the subject was in Agartala. While waiting for the results of the information check, Chujoy had an anxious expression on his face. The review of the phone usage data didn't take long, confirming that Chujoy's suspicions are probably well founded. What do you know? Client knows, client knows that subject uh, is his maternal house, is in her maternal house. But right now, as per our call detail record, the tower location showing that she is in Agartala. Not she is in, she was in Agartala for 20 to 25 days. And subject is frequently busy with the mobile at least 1.45 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. whole night. She is busy in mobile also. She's 
This initial review only provided a glimpse, and in order to reach a conclusive judgment, more substantial data and evidence were required. Such is the nature of a detective's work, which demands time and thorough investigation. Detective Troy advised Chu Joy to return home for the time being. Once Chu Joy left, Detective Troy called in his assistant and assigned her the tasks and necessary equipment needed for the day before setting out to conduct field reconnaissance. We will follow the detective's car from a distance, ensuring not to attract attention. Detective Troy begins his investigation with a lead obtained from the phone call, heading towards a location presumed to be the house claimed by Chu Joy's girlfriend to be her uncle's residence. We have to find out the subject's uncle's location, as because she told lie uh, to her fiancé, right? Mm -hmm. Two houses there. Huh, she has three uh, uncle, two is here and one is the far from Kolkata. So we are, I just, we have to know the uh, uncle is actually staying here or not. The process of gathering information in this case was not complicated or filled with thrilling suspense like in detective movies. Detective Troy relied on a simple yet highly effective method parking his car and approaching people in the area to engage in conversation. This straightforward approach proved fruitful, as people seemed willing to share information about others. Ultimately, the truth emerged that the house was not occupied by the girlfriend's elder relatives, but the room is rented by Choi's girlfriend and has been visited by many men. Although the gathered information was abundant and compelling, Detective Troy exercised caution and continued his investigation. Troy drove to the outskirts in order to search the girl's hometown. In the hometown, Troy encountered the girl's parents. The information he received not only corroborated his findings, but also revealed an even more shocking detail. Uh, the, uh, the father and mother, the parents of that girl was there, is there. And the mother told me that she's already married. Okay. Yeah, she's already married and she's already married with different caste. And that's why uh, they just uh, they just don't want to make any relationship with that girl. Okay. okay but whenever when the case came to us that we we have information that she is already unmarried now. Everything became clear, with little room for doubt. Detective Troy made his way back to the office. Chu Joy was already waiting there, seated and anxious. Inside the office, Troy shared all the findings and information he had gathered throughout the day. The young man sat there, receiving the distressing news with his head down. Although Chu Joy's family had no part in choosing this particular woman, he knew he had to inform his parents about what had transpired in the relationship he had chosen for himself. Whether individuals choose their own partner or parents make the choice on their behalf, it's still important for the parents to be aware of the decision. This highlights the significant influence that families hold over the lives of Indians. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. In Indian society, marriage is perceived as an integral part of the complete life cycle. It's believed that everyone must eventually get married, similar to how everyone eventually passes away. In India, marriage is still considered a destination. Destination in the sense that life, death and marriage. It's a sort of, a, we call it in social science as master status. 
If you're not married, you just looked up on especially a woman. There must be some kind of a mystery. Apart from being a social necessity, Hindu marriage is also regarded as a religious obligation. While arranged marriage practices have diminished or disappeared in many societies, in India, such beliefs and customs change at a slower pace. Many aspects, including marriage, tend to persist and remain unchanged over an extended period of time. You are in marriage where individuals uh, actually do not have much to say, parents decide. This has been a long practice, uh, uh, you know, in pre-modernity everywhere. In, in India, it is continuing uh, also to some extent, uh, probably to an extent where we are unhappy. Marriage is not just a matter between two individuals. It involves two families. In India, it's also a matter of the community and the belief system that supports the social structure. Even when parents find a partner for their children, it's another form of arrangement. While it may not be mandatory to get married to that specific person, there is a selection process and an opportunity to get to know each other before making the decision to marry or not. Families choose individuals from the same or similar caste who possess suitable qualities, often based on their surnames, which serve as an indication of caste. They also consider family status, parental reputation and personal history. Another unique aspect of Indian society is the persistence and influence of the caste system on people's mindset. Inter-caste marriage is considered wrong and unacceptable. Some individuals may even face disownment by their families and social ostracization. In a society where people and communities are becoming increasingly complex, private investigators have become an integral part of the marriage process for many Indians. Many families seek assurance and peace of mind by utilizing detective services to uncover the history and background of potential spouses for their offspring. Some individuals choose their own partners, but still rely on detective services like Jujoy. In addition to the belief that everyone must get married, research also indicates that Indians marry at a younger age compared to other nations. Teenagers in most cultures tend to be rebellious towards their parents, so are Indian teenagers. When it comes to love and marriage, they may have their own thoughts and needs. If they have to choose between marrying for love or someone chosen by their parents, most of the time they opt for the former. A love marriage is love marriage, or obviously love marriage. Okay, what about you? Love marriage. Go here. Love marriage. I prefer love ka marriage. Okay. I prefer love. I love love marriage. Of course love marriage. When asked, however, what they would do if their parents have arranged a marriage for them, their answers surprised us. I agree my parents. are already in the tariff, they are feeling that they are So I agree my not decision. If, there, if parents said that, and it will be good for me, no? So their parents, their parents, and they know what is good for me. I think I do not have any option. I have to go with my mom, mom and papa's uh, point of view. I have to go with Arden's marriage. I will go with my parents because they will know me and they will think about my future for better than me actually. So the, I will go with my parents. Yeah, it will be a little heartbreaking though, but okay, fine. It's not surprising that even teenagers who are considered to be in their rebellious phase have not truly rejected arranged marriages. This is because, apart from the caste system, another significant factor is the hierarchical system that remains robust and tightly woven into society. Parents not only fulfill the role of bringing children into the world, but also assume the responsibilities of guiding, mentoring and orchestrating their lives. Whenever they confront, uh, there is a difference between the parents' choice and their choice. They tend to be shaky. They tend to depend. They think their parents know best. That's why they haven't matured as an individual. 
percentage is very still less that where you know parents are saying that you know okay you do whatever you like to do those number of percentages are rare that's why see the the, the way they have been brought up is that you have uh, to obey your parents parents knows better Teenagers in other cultures may encounter and choose their own partners in various ways on their own. Even in India, they might be able to do so, but ultimately they still tend to follow their parents' wishes, just like they've done for generations. Marriage in India holds great significance and is considered a crucial stage in the cycle of life akin to birth and death. In this context, the responses from nearly all the young Indians we interviewed were understandable. The prevailing notion today is that choosing a partner and marrying for love is likely a better approach compared to arranged marriages. An interesting fact is, however, that the divorce rate for arranged marriages is remarkably low. This could be attributed to the fact that arranged marriages have minimal expectations for the married couple, focusing more on accepting each other's behavior. On the other hand, marriages based on love often start with higher expectations. Chujoy rejected the arranged marriage proposal, adopted to choose his own partner. They'd been in a relationship for several years, but met with disappointment. In contrast, this married couple had never met or known each other before. They didn't even lay eyes on each other until their wedding day. Yet, they have been together for over 20 years. আমি আমার পিসির মেয়ের বিয়েতে গেছিলাম দিয়ে বাবা মা সবাই গেছিলাম দিয়ে আমার শ্বশুর মশাইও শ্বশুর মশাই গেছিলেন আবার ননদ আমার ননদ নন্দাই সবাই দেখে আমাকে পছন্দ হয়েছিল দিয়ে বিয়ের কথাটা আমার মা বাবাকে বলেছিল and these 20 years have been filled with happiness অবশ্যই 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 অ্যারেঞ্জ ম্যারেজ না থাকলে একটা প্রত্যেকের মধ্যে কনফিউশন থাকতে পারে যে কি করেছে উভয় উভয়ের প্রতি একটা সন্দেহ থাকে যে কনফিউশনের তো ব্যাপার নেই যেটা করেছে ঈশ্বরকে মেনে নিয়ে বাবা মা বলেছে এটাই ফাইনাল এটাই ফাইনাল এটাই ঠিক এটাই মেনে নিতে হবে এটাই এটাই ভবিতব্য এটাই অদৃষ্ট এটাই সব কিছু ভুল করলেও মেনে নিতে হয় ওপর যে রান্না ভুল তো হতেই পারে রাখাটাকে হতেই পারে কিন্তু নিজেরা কম্প্রোমাইজ করে নিয়ে চলতে হয় both of them belong to the Brahmin caste, which is considered the highest caste in Indian society. This caste is responsible for performing rituals and upholding religious practices. Prachun mentioned that he has strong religious beliefs and naturally his wife Ratana shares the same level of devotion. Ratana consistently practices the act of praying and worshipping sacred entities twice a day, never failing in this regard. Prachun attributes the merit of having such a suitable and virtuous wife to his father. The couple has two sons. The elder son has pursued higher education and attended university, while the younger son recently celebrated his 14th birthday. Both sons have distinct career interests and aspirations. Prachun and Ratana explicitly mentioned that regardless of their son's chosen fields of study and future endeavors, they will not intervene and are prepared to provide support. Concerning matters of love and marriage, however, the parents will be the ones making the choices on behalf of their sons. সুতরাং আমি কখনো আমার ছেলে খারাপ চাইব না কখনো কারোরই কোনো বাবা কারোরই ছেলের বা সন্তানের খারাপ চায় না আমার বাবা চায় না যেমন আমার আমি আমার ছেলে চাইব না আমার তো মনে হয় অ্যারেঞ্জ ম্যারেজটাই ঠিক লাভ ম্যারেজে মানে একটু মানে কিছুদিন যাওয়ার পরে মনোমালিন্য কথা কাটাকাটি 
এই সব হতে ডিভোর্স হয়ে যাচ্ছে এরকম Prachun is not the only one who thinks this way. Almost every Indian parent we spoke to shared a similar perspective. See, I am a mother of one daughter. I really want my daughter should get uh, go for arranged marriage. That's my personal. Though I have um, I mean when I have got married I, I mean in a love relation only about him but uh, over the experience of years I think arranged marriage is better than love marriage. And I arrange marriage for children. I prefer arranged marriage. Why? Can it? बौरा देखे नहीं बौदेर खूब भल बौरा तीन टे बऊ तीन टेले मे तीन टे जमाई नाती पुती नाजनी रोग विोट मे छोट मे बंधु जिला का झाजी है मिथिला जी हम लोग पंडित है हम लोग अपना जात बरादर में देते हैं गाँव में समाज में It's not uncommon for individuals to enter into marriages with others who they've not yet met, making it difficult to predict how their married life will unfold. In this context, arranged marriages can be seen as imposing coercion and limiting individual rights. Despite being considered outdated and incompatible with modern ideals of individual autonomy, arranged marriages continue to be the predominant choice for a significant number of people. and this trend is expected to persist for the foreseeable future as long as the belief endures that marriage is an essential milestone in life just like birth and death with its own designated and suitable timing arranged marriages will retain their prominence <laughs>